So today's reading, yes. Yeah, so Mark chapter 4, 26 to 34. He said also, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is a smaller seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar, similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, just over a week since, it was Friday the 4th of June, the reading in the Day with Bread booklet for that day was the words I used as call to worship this morning from Moses, uh, from Deuteronomy. And then the, uh, the person who was writing that day told the tale of uh, three young teenagers who after a, a younger teenager, a 14 year old had been killed after being robbed of his, as, it, as in brackets, athletic jacket, so you know, a tracksuit top or a hoodie or whatever he might have been wearing and who it was for, whether it was supporting some big club or other, I don't know. It, that detail were not given but it'd been killed in this j jacket having been stolen and these four youths sorry three youths had been sentenced to life imprisonment for what had happened and this happened in 1983 some 36 years later the uh, new evidence came uh, came to light and someone else was convicted of the crime and these three men were released after being in prison for 36 years for a crime they did not commit and before they were released the judge apologized for what had happened to them and then it's commented that human justice is often flawed. We never know all the facts. Sometimes dishonest people lie. And sometimes we just get things wrong. As humans, we do not know everything. But God sees and knows everything. And he looks at the world differently. And in that way, you know, it might be we have been wronged against and we might not ever see this righted within our lifetimes. But when we come to meet God at the end of our lives, justice will be ours. Jesus and God gets everything right. They never do what is wrong. The Old Testament reading that is set today that we haven't read but will be familiar to quite a lot of you, if not all of you, is from 1 Samuel, from the, the last verse of chapter 15 to then the first 13 verses of chapter 16. And this takes place as uh, Samuel is sent out to anoint David to become the king. Uh, Saul has been disobedient to God and God 
has rejected him because of his actions. And Samuel is sent out to anoint someone else to be king. And he's told to go to Bethlehem and meet up with Jesse, who has a number of sons. And he wants, wants him to anoint one of them as king. So when Samuel meets up with Jesse and they get ready to sacrifice, Samuel then looks at Jesse's sons. The first one, the eldest son, is brought before uh, Samuel and he's a big strapping fella, good looking, strong. I imagine maybe in his early to mid twenties, sort of at his, almost at the peak of his life. And Samuel looks at him and thinks, hey, this fellow looks just the guy we need. But God said, no, this is not him. And this goes on down the line through seven of Jesse's sons. Progressively, they probably get smaller and less mature, but God rejects them all. And Moses, uh, Samuel then says to Jesse, have you got another son? He says, oh, yeah, we've just the the little one that's out in the field looking after the sheep. He says, well, can you bring him to me? We're not going to sit down until he comes. So they bring out, they bring David in from the fields. And it says, David is ruddy of appearance. You know, he's a fresh faced youth, good looking. But at that, he's a youth, he's probably quite small at that point. But uh, Samuel sees sees him and God says this is the one you know he was the one God looks at people differently he doesn't look at outward appearance as he says to Samuel God does not look at outward appearance he looks at the heart and he knew that David was going to have a heart for the work that uh, God had for him to do as king of Israel now, David, as we know, wasn't always perfect. He didn't always get things right. In fact, on one occasion, he was extremely sinful and going against what God would want him to live like. But when he realised he was extremely penitent and God did eventually forgive him. But also we know from David Yo, he was quite often in quite serious trouble, holed up in a cave. Yet we know from the book of Psalms that whatever trouble he was in, he always relied on God. He never lost faith, although he was really downcast at times. He never lost faith in God and he always looked to him for guidance. And that is why David really had the heart of God in him. And he was there faithful to him all along. And God was faithful to him. Now, as we read the gospel reading of today, there are two parables that come quickly after each other, which we quite often see as we read through the gospel. And Jesus used parables to try and teach the people uh, about the kingdom of God and about the work he was he was doing the people didn't always understand these parables but some of them did and his disciples when alone with Jesus would ask him to explain what he meant and he would explain to them the first one of these parables he says it's like a man who scatters seed and he speaks of how seed grows and how, you know, the man scatters seed and it grows up during the night. The rains water it, yet the man does not know how this happens. Well, I don't know whether any of you, I know there's probably, if not all of you, many of you who like to do a bit of gardening. And whether like me, you've enjoyed seeing the gardens grow and develop over the last few weeks. Maybe like me, you've even sowed a little bit of seed 
and grown some of your own plants. And I always think it's wonderful. It's magic how a little seed can grow up and become a beautiful plant within a few weeks. But Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God in this way. And who he meant by the man scattering seed was the was God himself who started off creation, started to build his kingdom right from the very beginning. The world grows and develops. And sometimes we as people can get very despondent about how the world is at present with wars and disasters and this dreadful coronavirus that's doing the rounds and doesn't seem to be going away. We can get very despondent and wonder what's happening to God's world, wondering what's happened to you and wars and many evil people about. I wonder where God is. But there are many good things happening in the world. God's kingdom is slowly growing. It's growing all the time. You know, and we only see the period of our life. We don't really see how it is growing day by day. Or by year by year, millennium by millennium, it grows does God's kingdom. And one day that harvest time will come. And as he says, the harvest time will come. And that is there. He's talking about the end of the world. When he will sort the wheat from the chaff. And the uh, sheep from the lambs. And in that, the... Uh, that time will come so what jesus is saying here we have to wait in patience like we wait patiently for things to grow and we know they will grow eventually they grow we have to look forward in hope when we sow something in soil to grow for the garden we don't do it despairing we do it in hope so we to look forward looking forward to the day when God will make things right. But also we have to do it in preparation. We have to be prepared for when that harvest time comes because we don't want to be the chaff and we don't want to be a goat. We want to be there as a sheep. We want to be there as the good wheat. So it is in listening to God and doing his work the best we can. But most of all, trusting in him, believing in him, being ever faithful like God is to us, where we will be a part of his when the time of harvest comes. And then he speaks about the mustard seed, the mustard seed. A very, very small seed that can grow in a mighty plant where the birds of the air will settle in it. The mustard seed is indeed quite a small seed. And I did actually a few weeks ago when I saw this was a reading, I went out and bought some mustard seed. Although the mustard that we have, which is a version of cress isn't quite the same mustard that uh, grows on the mustard bushes in places where the mustard is grown and the seeds are ground down to be you know, our English and French mustards, whichever we prefer to have. But uh, I have a few mustard seeds that's grown into plants here and uh, I'll, I'll just show you then. That's mustard seed. And I thought one day I might, I might prick some of these out into plants and, and see if I can grow a bush from them, see if they grow in a bush. But uh, I think for those of you who eat cress or eat, maybe eat mustard, it's, it's quite a, I think a, this is a, a more tangy taste than uh, normal cress. But, uh, 
you know, but I, I like that. I love to see things grow. And what God is saying with this, uh, the mustard seed is such a small seed and was used in Israel as a description of something very small. No, nothing was much smaller than a mustard seed. But when they grew, they grew to something quite big. And uh, in one thing I read this week, you know, they would grow and they would be bigger than a man sat on a horse. You know, and you know, indeed the birds of the air would come and shelter. What Jesus is talking about here really is the church started in a small way with Jesus himself beginning the teachings and gathering his disciples and his disciples uh, expanding the faith throughout the world. And this goes on to be bigger and bigger. So it spreads over all the world. And the church is there for people to come to and shelter in and help people to find faith when they're really struggling and doing everything we do. And sometimes we might have a little, as we talk, a germ of an idea or a seed of an idea. And sometimes that idea can be shared. And two or three people might get onto it, but these ideas spread. One idea that came like that was many a uh, couple of hundred years or so ago. When uh, uh, back in 1994, I think it was, uh, and uh, when I was beginning to contemplate being a local preacher uh, back in the Temple Street days and uh, Judith and Warren who were on this morning will remember this we performed a musical by Roger uh, it's called? Roger Jones a grain of mustard seed do you remember that and uh, this was about a newspaper proprietor in Bristol called Robert Rakes, who would go out onto the streets on a Sunday and he would see all the children who during the week were working in the factories or sweeping chimneys, whatever they were used for them days, just running about and being a general nuisance and uh, using probably quite industrial language and generally, you know, probably generally being children really, the one day of the week they could be children, but they were being unruly. And he got together with the mayor of the town and they thought it was a good idea perhaps that the churches should begin a Sunday school to one, help educate the children to teach them to read and write and to teach them about God and about Jesus and about the world. And this was the beginning of the Sunday School movement. A little grain of mustard seed that has grown and become something really big. Unfortunately, a lot of our churches, we don't perhaps have the same Sunday schools as they used to do. But it's still there and many of us still have a few children about. Um, when I go to my daughter Carolyn, who lives in Sheffield, go to the church that she attends, you know, there's lots of young families there and the numbers of children really is absolutely fantastic. But children, but this small idea grew to be something big and brought many, many children to God. And if nothing else, taught them to read and write, which benefited them in life. So small beginnings lead to great things. And that is what the kingdom is about. 
about the growth, about the hope, about preparation. So we are encouraged to trust in God with patience, to look forward in hope, not in despair. And it, it is the way we all should be ready, prepared when our time comes and sure that we have been faithful because when that time of harvest comes, we need to be one of those sheep and part of the good corn that God will take on with him forevermore. Amen. Amen.